My favourite insect in the whole wide world is the praying mantis and today we're going to be drawing this magnificent creature. Ever since I was a child I just loved this creature. It's got these strange eyes, very alien like that sort of tend to look around and follow you wherever you go. Just like spiders, the praying mantis doesn't eat crops or spread disease, but it does often eat those animals that do. As a child, I would catch a praying mantis and keep them as pets. I'd often feed cabbage moths to them, a type of white butterfly that's being introduced here as a pest, and the mantis usually makes quick work of it. My saddest experience keeping anything was a praying mantis. Because they move around so fast, I was trying to put a lid on a jar and accidentally cut off both the front legs of a praying mantis the claws that it uses to hunt with. I was only a very young child and I felt so guilty. I had a praying mantis that didn't have front claws, I couldn't release it in the wild. I would hand feed it, have to hold the food there while it ate because it had nothing to hold it with and it eventually died. The sad hard lesson there is that if you're going to keep a pet of any kind, you gotta try and think, well, what's best for the pet? It's great for kids to catch things, keep them in a jar for a while and let them go. It's a great learning experience, but there's not much in it for the actual animal itself. Another thing that put me off keeping praying mantis as pets is that sometimes they'll catch their prey and they just start eating it. They're just holding it and eating it rather than killing it and eating it. Spiders kill things, snakes kill things, but a mantis does not. It will just hold something and just start eating it and then an animal will die sometime during the course of it being eaten. So they'll eat things alive, they'll start at the wrong end and it makes it very hard for me to keep a praying mantis. Back in 1992, I documented this interesting thing about a praying mantis. I'd found an egg case, kind of looks like this honeycomb stuff. And it was springtime, the weather was warming up, and I put a few, just sprayed it and put some drops of water on it. And the next thing I know, all these little grub-like things were coming out of it. So I quickly sketched in this book here. And so this is my documenting what I found. So when the mantis first comes out, they look like a grub. They're hatching out, they wriggle around, and this grub has a skin on it, and the skin splits and it breaks. And out of that comes this tiny little mantis. And the mantis has this little bump on its head, like a little tooth spike thing. Uh, I think that that actually helps it break out of the egg. All these tiny itty bitty baby praying mantis coming out of an egg case, that was pretty cool. These days I like to see things in the wild, experience them, encounter them, sketch them, let them go. So I don't have to have the responsibility of trying to look after and care for something. Possibly the best way to experience nature out in its actual habitat.